Howdy y'all and welcome to episode 32 of my Let's Play series. I am Regaris and of course we are playing the uh, Feed the Beast Direwolf 20 pack. And in some other news for uh, Feed the Beast, I did finally get the ultimate pack working. So uh, I can start, I've been messing around with that a little bit the past couple of days, uh, getting some stuff done in there. But uh, what I ended up doing was removing all the voxel pack crap out of their uh, voxel player, voxel map. Uh, removed all that stuff out and uh, just put Ray's mini map in there. And it seems to be running fine now. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the issue was with all that stuff. But uh, it's working. And uh, on to the episode. We're going to do some bees today. Uh, this is the area that I've set up for bees. Uh, it's just right off of uh, our main area here. Just We're just going to run up. And uh, I put our power plant in. This is what I'm going to use for power, and it's just going to be for the bee area. Uh, it will put out 100 MJ a tick. Uh, what I have is 20 of the uh, bio biogas engines. And as we know from a previous episode, uh, with biomass, uh, these put out 5 MJ a tick, so there's 20 of them here. And it's variable. I don't have to turn them on all the time, uh, because most of the time I'm not going to need 100 MJ a tick. Um, only if I'm running multiple machines or if I'm running uh, the purifier when we get that built will we need that much. Uh, each lever will turn on 20 because uh, this lever turns on that one and this one so each lever gives us uh, I'm sorry 10 uh, MJ for each one so we will have a hundred and uh, we have two test racks here this one comes from our biomass production and this one comes from the lava tank um, the the lava really isn't hugely necessary to have right there I just didn't want to have to worry about resupplying this because I am going to be turning these on and off and uh, these only need lava to warm up so once they're to heat uh, you don't need to worry about it again but uh, I didn't want to have to because I am going to be turning them on and off uh, it, the lava will need to be refilled eventually so I figured it was easier just to go ahead and knock it out and uh, put that in there so I don't have to worry about it and our biomass is uh, pretty full. We're we're good to go on that. So uh, we've got a nice full tank, uh, 4,700 buckets or so. Um, still a lot of saplings in here. Uh, this is just a real quick and simple, easy biomass setup. This just when this spot right here is empty, it sends on a red wire signal, which lights this up and turns this autarkic gate on here. And this goes the same way for the fertilizer that's in here. Uh, when this gets below, uh, I think it's 25%, uh, it'll go ahead and fill this up, or, well, activate the red wire signal, pull from here, and uh, fill this up. So it's, it's pretty automatic. All we have to worry about doing is refilling the fertilizer. And once that fertilizer runs out, we're going to go ahead and hook it up to the uh, automatic uh, compost production that we have set up over at the farm which I think we already covered, but if not, let me know and, and I'll go over that again. Because that was a while ago and I'm still <laughs> still not out of compost that was in the two chests. So it's it's been a long time that it's been going through a, a, a diamond chest worth of compost at the uh, other... Well, actually one was iron. So, But what I've got set up right here right now is a centrifuge, which we will need. And uh, two carpenters. Uh, this one will eventually have honey, and this one will have seed oil. And the reason that I'm going to use two is so I uh, don't have to worry about draining the tank out to uh, make the items we need. So, last episode, I said get yourself some meadows and some forest drones. And uh, I actually went out and got these. I did not go over to my bee area and snag them. I, I went out and... and uh, hunted some myself and and got the uh, meadows and the uh, forest and I got some marbled which really we don't need to start uh, I thought one was a uh, forest hive but because they look so same but uh, I forgot the forest are always up in a tree so uh, but I did get lucky and uh, came across a village and got two apiaries from a villager 
And uh, inside of the apiary, I had a uh, forest queen, uh, which was mixed with tropical. And I've since breeded him out, so these should all be just regular common. And I got a uh, cultivated. So those are the two that we need to start with. So that was pretty cool because it, it just let me bypass that. But we'll still go over breeding and, and what we need to do to start with. Excuse me. So the first thing we need to do is make a couple of apiaries um, for our breeding. We're going to we're gonna need a lot of these things um, until we get our alviaries going. Now, what I like to do with bee breeding is I don't worry about any of the other bee species except for two to start with, and that's industrious and imperial, because those are the two that give the, uh, the items that you're going to need to start making uh, the uh, alviaries, which are the, the big um, mojo bee breeding things. Um, we want to make those as quickly as possible, so we definitely need the uh, pollen and we need the um, uh, imperial jelly. So we're going to have to, I'm going to focus on getting to those species first uh, before I start worrying about uh, any other species because we can get an alviary make made as quickly as possible we can make uh, what I like to call the uh, the mutator alviary and that will make our bee bee breeding process much much faster um, that's why I also like to store up the uh, the uranium because that's going to be real important when we get to that uh, that point so the first thing we need to do is uh, we'll go ahead and look up the apiary I already had it darn it the apiary recipe and we see we need impregnated casings now that's what we need the seed oil for because uh, you need the seed oil to make this and we don't need planks or anything we just need wood so we'll go ahead and grab a stack of that and we'll come over here and I've already got the seed oil in this carpenter uh, made some impregnated sticks so we can make the sole frames we'll go over that in just a minute but uh, we're gonna go ahead and put in our recipe here to make Well, we'll just we'll eh, we'll make about four or five of these things because we're going to need a few eventually. So it takes just a minute, and this is kind of like your uh, machine block or or whatever for the uh, for the forestry bee breeding stuff. Because you got to have one of these for every. Oh shoot! It would help if I turned on the power, huh? So give that just a second to. Uh, get warmed up and turned on okay that should be giving us some power now there we go so we got a few of these and turning on that one lever again like I said that gives us 10 MJ just off of those two that were just turned on and it doesn't use too much fuel which is nice and what fuel it does use. Uh, I, now, I haven't turned them all on yet, so I don't know how that's going to impact us. But most of the time, we're not going to have them all on um, until we really get into uh, mutating our bees. And uh, that, that will be a while. Because first, we have to get the, some bees bred up that have genetic traits that we want uh, in in our bees. And we'll that will probably be in a uh, future episode. But... Uh, we're just going to let it make this last one, and then we'll stop it right there. We'll just use it to make six. And what else do we need? And then we just need some uh, plankage and some slabbage. It's like a miniature alviary kind of. Do I have any slabs anywhere? Yeah, right there. So we should be able to come over here and throw it up there. That'll give us four. That's good for now. And we will grab us a uh, meadows, a couple of meadows, and a couple of forest drones. And that will be good. And then we'll go outside. Now, you could place them in a room uh, like this where it's covered, but it has to be uh, glass on the ceiling like that. Or they'll say they can't see the sky and uh, they won't breed unless you have uh, the cave dwelling trait so we're gonna go ahead and we'll just slap these down 
willy-nilly. Don't care really where, as long as they can see the sky. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to place one queen in these two. And I really suggest not doing this. Uh, don't even start bee. You can. I mean, you can start bee breeding just like right now. I could put the drones in there and let them start uh, start breeding. But uh, you're really going to the uh, to the extreme on your chances there of actually getting anything. It's best if you can make yourself some soul frames. Soul frames help the mutation process one they shorten the life of uh, the bees so your your breeding process is quicker and uh, the second is it gives it a better chance for mutation I think it's like a uh, two or five or something percent chance of you're gonna get a better mutation chance when I do with the frames proven proven those I got out of a one of the uh, Farmer chest. Where did I put those things? Okay. So we got them right here. I don't have any more impregnated frames on me. Hold on. Let me go make some more. Now I got a stack right there. That'll do. So we're going to... Uh, this is the, in, the impregnated frame uh, recipe right here. It's the impregnated sticks, which is just two logs and the... Uh, in the carpenter with seed oil and that will give you the impregnated sticks and then when you combine the sticks with a string in the middle you get the frames and uh, we want let's move these bees out of the way well, I can put this cultivated over here we're gonna keep these bees for now and uh, we're gonna kill them all for their genetic material eventually or their traits if they have anything that we want but uh, first thing we need to do is make, since we're going to do two sets of bees, I've already got these soul frames, so we're going to just make three more soul frames. And a soul frame, what the hell, uh, is soul sand. Do I have any soul sand? I swore I went and farmed. There we go. Um, real easy recipe is just your impregnated frame with a uh, block of soul sand that gives you the soul frame and these are real important until we can get up to the uh, alveary and we can start uh, using the mutator blocks so we're just going to use that for now alright so we've got our bees so we're going to go ahead and slap these soul frames in here and what we want to get to is the common bee and once we have a common bee a purebred common uh, will combine a common with a or is it a cultivated with a common uh, shoot hold on give me just a second let me look at a wiki here can't remember which way it goes now come on Um, but you're going to take the, uh, the meadows and the forest, and that's going to give you a common. Once you have your common, then you can start getting into the, uh, uh, the common is a forest and a meadow, and then the cultivated is a, co uh, common and a forest, I'm sorry, for the cultivated. The, uh, the, uh, common and the cultivated, then, will give you your noble, or it's going to give you a diligent, one of the two. Uh, so first thing you're going to do is the, the meadows and the forest, that will give you a common. And then the common in a forest or a common in a meadows will give you a cultivated. Uh, once you get a pure common and you get a pure cultivated, breed them up a while until you get uh, multiples. You're, you're going to want more than just one of one queen, one drone. Uh, make yourself a few queens if you can. Make yourself a few uh drones if you can and doesn't hurt to have numbers because these are going to be used for later bees also so once you have a good common group going and a good cultivated group going you're going to do a common queen and a cultivated drone 
Now, the cultivated drone, um, the, I'm sorry, that combination is going to either give you the um, diligent, is a diligent, um, make sure everything's still working there. I'm flipping through too many windows. Um, <laughs> darn it. <laughs> ah, having too many, flipping through too many windows here. Uh, the, I'm sorry. Okay. Take two. <laughs> the common and the cultivated is going to give you one of two Bs, the noble or the diligent. Uh, those are going to take you down the two lines that you need for the imperial or the industrious. Okay. You're either going to get the noble or you're going to get the diligent. Those are going to be the two Bs that you're going to get from a common and a cultivated. And uh, then you're going to take both either one of those Bs, uh, noble or the diligent, and you're going to breed it with a cultivated drone. And that will give you the next one. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll move down from there. And I would definitely go to the FTB wiki. And you can just do a search for uh, bees, and it'll come up with one that says bee species, and it should have a nice list for you that kind of explains all the different uh, combinations and direction you want to go. So you can kind of see where you want to go with your bees and what you need to eventually get there. See, what well, we definitely, oh, okay, we need to go sleep real quick because they're not breeding, not doing their thing. Now, well, like I said, what we want to do is we want to get to the Imperial and we want to get to the Industrious so they will start producing the materials that we need for the um, Alviary, which is the big ones. So I'm going to cut here and I'm going to do some breeding and hopefully we will get up to there. Uh, hopefully we'll get to an Imperial and an Industrious and when we get those two, uh, we'll automate the uh, the apiary with uh, those bees in it so we can start getting the materials we need for an alviary. So after the cut, we'll be back, hopefully, with an industrious and an imperial bee, uh, purebred. See you in a minute. Well, that sucked, sucked, sucked. Um, it is actually like another day later before I finally got all the bees that I wanted, which are our Imperial and the Industrious. Um, this was actually a really huge pain in the butt to get these guys. Um, I kept getting weird um, combinations. Now I think when I did this originally with this pack, Dyer had not added extra bees yet. So it wasn't that hard to get them. Uh, with the extra bees, it added a, a ton new uh, species and they all use the uh, the uh, kind of the diligent and the commons, or not the diligence. Well, yeah, diligent commons uh, cultivated. So I kept getting these sweetened drones, and I got uh, uh, some weird mutations. Uh, I was doing a uh, majestic imperial mix, and I was trying to take two and get a pure imperial, and I ended up getting a majestic tropical, which wasn't even in the line anywhere. So yeah that was a pain in the butt it took me a really really long time to do this the old-fashioned way which is uh, just breeding them in here and that's not using any of the advanced genetic uh, machines that come with extra bees now this would probably have been a lot easier had I used those machines because when I got a weird kind of crossbreed what I could have done is uh, used that bee and attempted to get the uh, genetic trait that I wanted. So what we're doing right now is I'm running uh, just a Meadows for uh, Honeycombs and an Imperial because what we want from the Imperial is Royal Jelly. And then down here we're running an Industrious so that we can get the uh, the pollen. Now we need those for our al uh, yes, the Alviaries. These are Apiaries. Um, and what I've done is uh, just set up a real quick kind of uh, automatic uh, feeding thing. And there's different ways to do this. This is just the, the way that I did it. Um, what we have down here is wooden pipes pulling the bees out of the apiaries. 
and then we have two apiaris pipes which are made with a uh, diamond pipe with uh, two propolis and you get the propolis either from your cultivated bees or uh, the industrious uh, bees they'll drop these uh, stringy combs and when you centrifuge these you get the propolis now another way to get the propolis uh, if you're not up to that point yet and you want to get some uh, some propolis is you can squeeze your honey um, when you put the honey in a squeezer we have over here one of the the uh, side products is propolis and you need this to make those apiaris pipes so what happens is well when these bees die off uh, well as they produce material or bee products uh, they're pulled out and uh, this pipe right here is saying that the items, you saw one just shoot by right there, go down the green line. So it's just kind of like a diamond pipe, but it's a little different because it's for uh, B type stuff. You can actually go in here and say uh, what you want to go, or um, I mean, you can you can go really in depth. Uh, you could probably even breed with this. I I have not attempted to do that, but. Uh, I'm sure you could set up some sort of auto breeding system. Uh, I don't go that in depth with it. I, I just do my breeding manually. I just do it myself. But let's go take a look at my uh, normal bee area or my regular bee area. And because uh, I don't think I really want to re reproduce all that over here. Uh, we may. We may just go over it. But uh, let me show you what we would work towards. Uh, we'll just shoot over there real quick. And this is what we're trying to get. And this is an alveary. Now, the, the benefit over these alvearies as compared to the apiaries is these do not need frames for them to get the uh, their normal production out of them. Uh, the apiaries, if you don't put frames in there, you're not going to get their full production. And even with frames, you're not going to get their full production. Now, with an alveary, and these are frame frame housings that go in your uh, alveary. This will even jump their their production even more. Now this one is a what I call a mutator breeder alveary. Um, it's got three mutator blocks. That's the ones with these X's. And because generally I don't uh, put all the traits that I want in them when I'm making a new one, it's got a light so that they'll work at night that's a light block you know, can't open that one and this is a rain shield so and I've even got a heater over here so this block kinda has everything in it uh, that a bee would need to uh, to work at night in the rain um, if the temperatures too uh, cold for them um, I haven't added the blocks of course for to chill it or anything like that because generally uh, I'll just if it's really an issue, I, I'll just go over here and use the, the genetic machines and we'll breed those or change the bees the way we want them. And these are the machines that we need to make right here. Uh, there's only five of them. I know there's a lot more, but this is really all you need. Uh, this one right here is your gene pool. Now what this one does is you, the instead of having a lot of bees around, you can uh, throw your bee in there and it kind of grinds them up and you get liquid DNA out of it. Uh, so you can fill a uh, tank with this. Now I did have a uh, a railcraft tank right here, and it was completely full, and I had a lot of bees I needed to get rid of. So I made a uh, bigger multi tank and uh, drained that one into here. So all the when I grind up some bees, their DNA goes in here, and then there's another valve pulling it up and uh, going into uh, the other machines that require that. So this is the one that's really important to us as far as breeding goes, and this is called the isolator. Um, this is the one where you put a bee in here. Um, let's just grab a, uh, okay, an unweary. Now, this is a good example because this is what I was running into. I was getting these, uh, a lot of cross, bee, cross breeds as I was breeding over there. Uh, you can see, saw my index over there. It was quite full of bees. Um, what we can do with this one is we can take him, throw him in this spot right here, and he will, uh, th you'll see this kind of thing go up. We'll just throw him in here real quick. Uh, and what it'll do is you have a chance of getting one of the traits from this bee. 
So if we look at this B real quick, you can see that we can get uh, any of these traits that are on here. Any of these traits, uh, any of these traits, uh, of course there's none here. Um, let's say you had an effect, you'd have the possibility to get any effect. Uh, if it had a real high fertility, you could get that. If it had a different flowers, you, you, can, you can get that. You, anything in here you can possibly get a serum for. Uh, so here you can see we have a flowers pollination and an effect cancellation serum, which is real important. Uh, always get yourself one of those so you can kill the uh, poison effect or whatever. And then in here is where I keep uh, the, the effects that I use a lot, which is fast productivity, uh, rainfall that gets them working in the rain. Uh, this is the uh, both two humidity, which means I put that on them and they'll work pretty much anywhere. Purify node, which is uh, longer lifespan. Uh, Explorer effect, that one gives experience. This one lets them work at night. Uh, then it's the temperature one up and down. Uh, magic flowers. So, you know, I've got, uh, what I try to do is whenever I get a new species, this is, these are all species, whenever I get a new species, I try to get the uh, a serum for them in case I need to make them again. And just in case I don't have any running around that I can use. So I try to uh, throw them everything new in the isolator and get that trait or that species. You, you can even get the species. So, okay, once you have a serum, uh, to charge a serum up, let's find one that's kind of empty here. Uh, effect cancellation. Okay, I'll just take that one. What we're going to do, and this is where your liquid DNA comes in because you need it for the next two machines. You're going to take this and you're going to throw it in here. Now you can see right now it says excellent quality. Uh, once this charges up a little bit, it's, it's going to degrade uh, possibly as low as poor quality. So once you have that, you're going to take it over here to the purifier. And you're going to throw it in there. And it's again going to use liquid DNA. And it's going to take this from whatever it goes down to up to excellent quality okay so this serum will then be a, uh, at excellent quality and you want to make sure you use it at excellent quality or it could uh, it could you know damage your bee uh, it could have weird effects so when you get done you have uh, I don't remember what I did to these guys I was putting nocturnal on them um, so let's say I want to now change this bee uh, let's say this one has an effect uh, I would take this serum once it's uh, purified and I would take the bee and throw him in here and he's going to drop into this spot right there and I would place my serum right here. Now it may take uh, you know two three tries to uh, completely change the bee maybe even more to change that bee's trait that for the serum you have in here but uh, this is real handy uh, when you're getting weird bees like this where you can't just get a purebred. You're just having a real problem getting a purebred. Uh, if you can get the uh, species serum uh, from a bee like that, and let's say you're looking to get the uh, the just a pure unweary. So you throw him in here until you get an unweary uh, bee or uh, serum. Uh, throw it in here, charge it up throw it in here and get it up to uh, excellent quality and then uh, you throw your bee in here and your serum in there and uh, a couple of 10-15 uh, minutes later because this thing is pretty slow uh, you're going to have a uh, pure unweary and you can take any bee species and change them to uh, another bee species so like I can take Rocky which is a pretty good drone to start with because they have uh, they can they have cave dwelling uh nocturnal and uh they work they're a strong flyer i think or they work in the rain so that's a pretty good bee and you get a ton of them when you're coring uh as you core you'll get a ton of these rocky drones and rocky uh princesses and you can then use those as um kind of a base to pump other species and traits into to get the bee that you want so um this is pretty cool this is pretty cool but what we need to get up to, to get away from the frames, um, and we have two options to go for. Either we can keep going the way we are right now and produce 
uh, two alvearies so we can get a better production, uh, which is maybe the way we want to go. Because uh, once you have an alveary, you don't have to worry. They're easier to automate, for one. Uh, you can see right here, uh, these are all connected. Each one has an uh, apiary pipe and a wooden pipe, and that's all each one takes. And then they're all connected underground, and the bees come over to this chest. And uh, underneath here, uh, there's a diamond pipe that goes down to our... Uh, um, they call it our squeezer down below where it's all processed and so if we go down here all the uh, the honeycombs and uh, the different types of combs are all sent over here uh, put into a centrifuge and then the items that I want to keep are sent over to this chest uh, items I want to lose are voided in a pipe back there and then, of course, all the honey drops come out. They're squeezed, and they're put into the uh, the multi-tank here, which uh, uh, may want to think about expanding this tank a little bit. And this is all pretty much done by itself. I don't have to worry about it because I don't have to worry about frames. So that's where we're kind of at on the the new base area here. Get to sleep real quick so I don't get jumped by every skeleton and creeper outside. Skeletons skeletons just don't even miss anymore. Dog, what are you barking at? Ain't nobody out there. Barking at ghosts. Um So I'm gonna let this one run for quite a while. I'm probably going to go do some some uh, run some errands and just leave the game on and let this run because to uh, make an alveary we need about a stack and a half if we go look at an alveary uh, we need about a stack and a half of these scented panelings to make an alveary so we'll need about uh, 27 casings which are easy but as you can see the uh, the uh, alvearies or the uh, scented paneling these take the royal jelly and the pollen and some honey so we'll we'll need to squeeze up a bunch of honey um, which is what the honeycomb is for and uh, we'll need at least oh about a stack and a half of each of those just to make one alveary and uh, once we get that done We'll, I'll probably get enough for two, and uh, what we can do is we can put two up right away, and that will increase our production because we won't have to keep coming out. Oh, shoot, see, I'm out of frames on that one, so I need to go make some frames. Um, we won't have to worry about the frames, or if we want to use frames, uh, it would just increase our production, which is nice. I mean, if you, you can slap uh, frames in these things... Yeah, well, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll slap some frames in the, you know, add frames to our alveary. Maybe even automate that a little bit. Okay. So we're we're going pretty good. I it's this was a real pain in the butt. I'm not kidding. Uh, it took me. You know, I filmed the first half of this probably uh, oh late morning. Um, around lunch or whatever and uh i didn't finish this until the following day about the same time so <laughs> it's a uh it was a lot longer than i thought it was going to be uh because i kept getting like i said i kept getting um the extra bees bees um popping into the mix which was weird i, I don't know where that tropical came from um uh, the sugar one uh you know i looked up what the sugar bee was or the sweet bee, and uh, it had nothing to do with the bees that I was uh, using at the time, so I don't know how he went, that one popped in. And I'll tell you what, once I got that bee, it took me forever to uh, to uh, made it back to a uh, diligent. It took me forever to get it back down to a diligent. I had to go through um, a ton of diligence to get it back. And uh, what I was doing is when I would get a purebred, I would throw it in uh, this apiary with chocolate frames, which kills them real quick. Um, so I could throw them in there and just keep producing and keep producing and keep producing. So I would get like a stack of the diligent bees 
thankfully I got almost a full stack of diligent bees. Um, so I was able to, uh, use them to get back. Uh, the Imperial was the one that was giving me fits with, uh, the majestic, uh, turning into tropical. And I don't know where that came from because I mean, that's not even one of the bees that we use. So I don't know where that came from. It was very bizarre. So that's where we're at for bees. Um, from here, or now that we have, uh, you know, the cultivated, these are the species that we need to make aviaries. Now, these, the cultivated and the common are the bees that you need for, um, the, it's kind of like a base for a lot of the other bees. Again, if you go to the FTB wiki and you do a search for a bee, you'll find one that says bee species. And then there's a nice list of all the bees and kind of the combinations that you need to use to produce your desired result. So you can go in there and say, okay, I need a bee that produces copper. Uh, you know, what do I need to get to that? And it'll kind of list it out for you. And then, um, once we get a mutator alveary going, uh, it'll go much easier. It, it's just a lot easier. You will go through quite a bit of uranium. So, um, one of the first bees you may want to work for towards is the uh, the radioactive bee, which produces uh, <laughs> uranium. Because I know I went through, uh, well, you don't really need one. I went through a bunch because I kept trying to get the uh, Stark bee, and uh, it just would not produce. But I think there was a bug uh, with that, and it just wouldn't produce, wouldn't produce. And uh, I think the last update the very next time that I did it, it it gave it to me so yeah bees are a lot of fun they will consume your life in Minecraft uh, for a very long time because there uh, there's just a lot of maintenance on them until you can get the alvearies made to uh, stay on top of them if you if you want any production out of them because you cannot manually add these frames unfortunately I think I heard that was by design that uh, he had actually coded it that way so you could not automatically uh, pipe in frames to this, which sucks. I guess he figured, well, nobody will want an alveary if you can just make these things and it just pump. Because it's not too hard to make the frames. It's uh, pretty easy to automate it. So I guess he figured, you know, well, I don't want anybody to do that. So, yeah, so we definitely do want to get up into the alvearies because once we have the alvearies, uh, this goes much faster, especially when you get the mutator alveary. So I'm going to work on that. I'm going to um, let these guys run. I've got some errands I have to run today, so I'm just going to AFK and and uh, let these bad boys go. And hopefully we'll come back and have you know three or four stacks of everything and and uh, can start producing some alvearies. I'd like to make three. Go ahead and make one for the. Uh, just to keep producing the materials we need for more alvearies and then one alveary to um, start mute or breeding with so a breeder uh, mutator alveary well I appreciate everybody coming by um, sorry about the kind of the uh, delay in the video on this one it just took me so long to uh, to get those bees uh, it was it was kind of painful. Uh, it was a lot easier before extra bees. I think extra bees kind of made it more difficult because I was getting weird weird combinations. I uh, appreciate uh, the comments. Someone uh, posted on one of my older videos that I was pronouncing applied energetics wrong. I was pronouncing it applied energistics. It's energetics apparently, and I do apologize for that. Um, I will try to remember that in the future. Don't forget to give me a like and or subscribe if you haven't, and I will see y'all later.